welcome to Zines and Roger. This tutorial is for a corner to corner cowl and hat set. For both the hat and the cowl you use exactly the same chart, it's just what you do with the crochet once you've finished following the chart that's different. I will show you both. Um, this chart I'm using here is just for a sample swatch so it's a lot smaller um, than the the actual chart. For the actual chart I've added some arrows so that you can see which direction to do your work um, and on this little chart I've just scribbled the arrows down there. Um, that just tells me which way I want to work um, and the only reason that's important is because it saves me snipping yarn in places that I don't if I don't have to snip that yarn and sew in more ends then I'll avoid it and just the direction of the work will help that because um, I want this to flow nicely and work it all in one piece. Um, different C2C projects mean carrying yarn. This one is quite simple in that there's not a lot of that going on. Um, I'll crack on. I have got um, a five millimeter hook and some Aran weight acrylic. For my actual set, I used this stuff, Happy Sheep Wool Power. Um, it's 100% wool. Those are the. That's the advice on the label. Um, I've had a play around with both, and they work up. A fairly similar size so if you want to use sort of a different iron weight then that's fine. So to start a C to C I chain six and I move my hand out of the way. In the fourth chain from hook make one UK treble or US double. And then you're making two trebles, or US doubles, into the next two stitches. So that your first row, or first block, looks like that. So C to C is just a series of these, going from the cor one corner of your work to another. And this block here represents the first block on my chart. For row two, turn your work and chain six. And again, work into the fourth chain from the hook. Oops. So that's the first block made of that is the first block of row two. Um, slip stitch into the chain space of the first row and then chain three and into the same chain space make three UK troubles, three US doubles. So that's row two made. Row three, chain six. Whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, see, so this is just to increase, you're always chaining six. And that's how you make your first block. And you've noticed that I have, uh, I didn't turn my work before I chained. I like to make the first block and then turn, but it's entirely up to you what you do. You can turn it before you make that sixth chain if you prefer. So 
so after three rows it looks something like that um, and that means we can also cross off the first three rows of the chart um, the next one I'm working this way and um, it's a colour change to change colour all you have to do is slip the new colour through your loop on the hook to begin the, um, the chain 6 um, now you could change colour like you might traditionally do by changing colour halfway through the last stitch before the colour change however that doesn't create quite as crisp a finish on the block and you notice that more so in the middle of your work if you make sure you keep um, the colour changes um, nicely pulled tight as well so they're not too loose and when you sew them in make sure you sew them in um, really securely too that way they're not going to come loose so on this colour change uh, my yarn is coming from here and so all I do is lift it to where I want it to be and loop it through loop it through the chain space and loop it onto the loop that was on my hook to carry on my merry way and then I finished the row as before my next row has a colour change here so I'm just going to do that again it's coming from here and so I'm just going to lift that to where I want it put it through the chain space pull it through and pull it through the loop that was on my hook to begin my block in this case the last block of the row and that's one of the ways that you can change colour sometimes the yarn might come from a different direction sometimes you might want to carry it over a few blocks which works especially well if only one side of your work is going to show if you're going to make a cushion or a bag that you're going to line you could carry yarn over a couple of blocks as long as you kept it all to one side so that your right side was fine and clear of lines um, floats then that's fine too you could just carry it over I don't tend to carry it over more than maybe four or five blocks because um, otherwise it, um, it can make your work look a bit skewy Okie dokie, on the chart I am um, on this row here so I've done my colour change of this colour which is my mustard here a couple of um, green or blue on the chart and then I've worked all the way up to here so that I am just about to join to this one if I was making a bigger blanket then I would continue by um, joining with a slip stitch and then chaining three and making the block here but this is where I want to stop I don't want to increase any more because I'm at this corner so um, you make the slip stitch into the, the that block and then slip stitch across the top of the trebles until you get to the chain space of this block instead okay and then your corner has begun and you start from here instead so you chain three not six 
and make your block. And then you work the rest of the row as normal because what you want to do is begin working across here now but also carry on building your work along here so you're making it into a rectangle this is now the width that's um, the width of it and how, how long it's going to be so we want to continue with increasing because we want that to come down in this direction and this one we're working along here for this design I have finished with this colour that's this bit and I have I've done all of that so I can cut that yarn now which is good because I need it over the other side and I don't want to carry it over because I don't want floats on this project so I'm going to reattach it here um, but you can see um, the pattern is forming for this row um, I'm going to bring the green up here and then you'll start to see the pattern emerging um, and it's worth pointing out that you need to make sure that you're regularly checking your work against the chart because trust me you will go wrong I go wrong all the time one two three four five six so attaching the new yarn again which is the same bringing in the yellow and I just wanted to show you working working all the way with um, the other colour to form the, the design shaping and you'll see as well I'm working from three different balls of yarn at the same time so yeah, they do get twisted and tangled, um, but just when you get to the end of a row, untwist them to make life a little bit easier. It's worth taking the time to do that, because um, bigger projects require more colour changes and therefore more tangles. So you can see that point starting to form that's what it looks like at the moment and I'll just continue doing that rectangle piece until we get to this corner I have come to the end of the road and um, I'm here in this corner so I want to join here so I am where am I essentially I have um, I've just made this block here having worked from that direction so hook into the chain space at the end and then turn and slip stitch across the top of the block next door so that is your your corner here so you did that one first up there, you worked like that, boop boop boop, corner, do 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 do, rectangle, corner. And so now what we can do is bring it in to make the last corner, which is dead simple and pretty much what, um, it's just the same, just the same but no increases, that's all. 
a few slip stitches and boom. Oops. For goodness sake. Okay, so already you can see that that's got a nice corner formed. So I'm just going to work up to here where I'm bringing it in again, same. I'm almost at the end. I'm just going to work the last block. You finish here, but I just like to slip stitch into the corner. I don't suppose you have to, but not in all C2Cs, but in this case it would be helpful if you did because that's where you want your yarn to be. So leaving a long enough tail that will enable you to sew that width. Get yourself, well, tie it off first. Get a darning needle. And then choose, I mean I haven't sewn in my ends yet, but I would do that at this point normally. Um, before sewing the ends together and I like to use excuse the aeroplane I like to use the mattress stitch so that's like the last that's the um, the chain on the end so just find the end of that somewhere and then it's just a question of weaving in and out I'm doing this around the camera, it's really awkward. I'll have to try and find a better method. Um, I'm not too precious about placement of the stitches. You don't really notice that much. You'll um, have this at the back of your neck anyway, presumably. Um, you might want to take Take your time, be a bit more careful about where you're bunging those stitches. So when you're at the end, just sort of tie it off um, thusly and then sew the end in wherever, wherever it goes. I don't know what it is today, but there are a billion aeroplanes flying over today. So just like um, sew that in wherever and then snip. I mean obviously again you want to sew that in a bit more thoroughly than that. And the same with the other end. I'll just do this just because it might get in my way when I go to do the brim if I decide to do it at this end. When you do the brim it doesn't matter which which end you do it. In. So that's what that join looks like. It's not completely invisible, but um, it's a pretty neat one. It's, the way you weave in and out like that is called a mattress stitch. And there's your mini, this is a mini cowl um, that would fit on a teddy bear. <laughs> I don't know. Or, uh, no. I don't know. You could fold it in a different way and make it into a little purse. But um, obviously that's not what we're here for today. Pretend all these ends are sewn in, okay? Let's just hide those. So that is the cowl, effectively. To turn it into a hat, get some more yarn and attach it to wherever. Um, for the sake of tidiness, let's attach it near the back. So, I'm going to chain three and I'm in a horizontal bar of a treble here and so I just want two stitches in there so in this case it's a chain three and one UK treble US double. In the blocks where you've got three vertical stitches I make three 
stitches along the top. And I'm going to um, crochet over that end as I go. And then I've come to um, one where it's laying horizontally. So that's two stitches in that one. And then three in the next and so on all the way around. Um, it doesn't matter too much as long as you end up with an even number of stitches all the way around because the next row will be front post and back post stitches around. So um, work all the way around and then we'll get to the next stage. When you've worked all the way around, just join the slip stitch to the top of the three chain and then chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch. Um, as you can see, I've done a really good job sewing that up. <laughs> Ideally, you want that to be a bit, a bit closer together. And then in the same space, or in the same stitch, make a front post treble stitch and then in the one after a back post treble and all the way around you're just going front post, back post, front post, back post when you arrive back around your last stitch should be a back post treble because your first was a front post treble. Um, if it isn't, then you need to you've you've got an, um, an uneven number of stitches on the base row for your brim. Um, so just count before you come into this next row, just to make sure you do in fact have the correct number of stitches and then when you've um, landed back at the beginning slip stitch to the top of the first treble not that two, two chain and then repeat that row two more times so your brim should be about so deep um, so that's basically chain two begin with a front post so you're front posting into the front post of the row below and back posting into the back post etc so you do that all the way around again and again but I'm not going to do it for the sake of this because it's just repeating what I've already done instead I shall fasten off and pretend that that is the hat's brim and then I will take back what I said a moment ago about sewing in these ends because actually I want one I want this one. This one will do. So I sewed those ones in, didn't I, where I'd done the stitching. Keep one of those to gather the hat together. Whoops. Okay, and then with a, probably a longer piece than this, I think that this might just do it on this occasion. Get yourself a long tail and then just weave in and out, in and out, all the way around. Um, it doesn't have to be entirely uniform but just sort of do it every centimetre or so on the main hat I would. That's an end that should be sewn in. Um, and yeah, I, well you can see I've started pulling mine together already. go all the way around. I'm so sorry about these ends. Don't ever snip them this short in real life. It's just I'm just getting them out of the way for this swatch. Breaking several rules there and they're not ones that should be broken. Okay so you're at the beginning and then you've gathered your hat so you have a nice little hat like so. 
and then for a good few stitches just make sure that you go in and out and get those gathers really secure go through the loop a couple of times or what, whatever and get that so that it's mega secure and then when it's all done and dusted you can just tuck that end tuck it through the center and at this point if you choose to you can make a pom-pom and stick it on the top and that is a cowl that's been turned into a hat just so in your ends and if you've got a spare end if you find yourself you've got a gaping hole which you won't have because you would have been far more thorough than me close it <laughs> ta da Oaky pokes. So that's the back seam, so you'd wear that at the back. And then you've got your um your hat. Voila. Oh that's quite cute. I need to go and find a teddy to put it on now. Right. Don't forget that the pat the written pattern and more notes and whatnot are on my blog. The description box below will have the link. Thank you very much for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.